Okay. All right. So because you have for five minutes for your part B and part C, um, your part B session should be answered within 12 minutes. All right. Because you have six questions, you should not spend more than two minutes per question. Okay. So two minutes in each question, then two times six give you 12. So usually between 10 to 12 minutes should be done with your part B so that you can have ample time. All right. To tackle your part C questions. All right. So part B requires a lot of understanding. Requires you to look at the text to understand, unlike a part A. Part A does not require you to understand anything. Just for you to scheme and scan, go to the text, get the answer, impute your answer. And simple as that. But part B, they give you very short text, which we're going to them do some practical sessions. And then they give you short text, usually about 100 to 150 words. Okay, it could be a memo. It could be some certain information. It could be an update. It could be a. It could be anything. But then anything related to the medical space, and then you're expected to answer one correct answer out of the three options that you're given: options A, option B, option C. All right. So that's what it entails. All right. So we'll be looking at um, what are the things we need to note. Why do you reading part B? Yeah, everybody has different styles. Everybody has different ways how to answer their questions. However, we're going to look at it from a broad overview and see how we can easily, you know, answer our part B questions without feeling anything. I think the idea is for us not to feel because we're going to do practical sessions together. All right. And then by the time we do practical sessions, everybody is expected to participate. And um, I believe that practical sessions makes things more easier and then you'll be able to understand how and answer the questions. All right, so I'm going to the next slide. All right, so the first thing you can see here is read the question before the text, okay? And highlight key points. Okay, so what this means is you read the question before the text. So for example, you are given a question, okay, in reading part B, right? It's important that you look at the question and understand and paraphrase them in your head what this question is trying to tell you about. For example, the question can tell you this memo is talking about the use of blood pressure. Okay? So you know that, okay, what you're looking for in the text is anything that has to do with blood pressure. And then you're cooling your answers to looking for what they will say about blood pressure. All right. So you need to understand what is the question. Don't just rush. What candidates do is they, they'll just quickly look at the question. They don't even have, they don't even, mem not really memorize. They don't put it in their head. And then they are reading the text. They don't even know what they're really looking for. But because they're under pressure, under some level of anxiety, they will not be going back and forth. From question back to the text, question back to the text. And before you know, they're spending like three to four minutes in one question. Read the question prompt first. Understand what it's talking about. Okay, so first you read the question that goes with the text, right? So when you read the question that goes with the text, yeah, there are school tool of school, two school of thought here. Now, if you read the question that goes with the text, then you cannot look at the multiple choice answer questions, options that goes with it. So remember I said that you have options A, you have options B, you have option C. Now, those options A, B, and C, you don't necessarily need to memorize them just want to have an idea what is option a what is option b what's option c you don't need to waste so much time there all right so the main thing is understand the question brush through your a b and c and then you now go to the text all right and then as you are looking through the question and also the options a b and c if you have your pencil or your barrier with you in the exam or try to underline what you feel like are the important phrases or words okay, that you will need to remember while reading the text. For example, let's say in the question prompt, the question prompt says something about blood pressure monitor, right? You may know that that's the important thing in that question prompt. And probably if you have a little bit of gap, okay, in trying to recall, it's important that you circle that or underline it so that by the time you're reading the text, I want to flip through quickly to look at the question again. You already know the highlighted part of your question and your and your options. Okay, so for example, you underline or circle what you feel is the most important word or phrase in both the questions and the answers. This way, you have a good idea of what you're looking for before you even read the text. 
okay? And you can keep looking back to the question and answers as you read the text with your highlighted phrases being the most prominent thing that you see, right? So being the most prominent thing that you see. So once you read the text, we're going to do some practical sessions. Ensure that you underline what you feel that it's important and also with the options that are given to you. So by the time you're reading the questions, you're going to read fast. That's the first thing. Number two, you're going to understand better with the text. And then if you're having issues with comprehension, you can quickly look at a glance through to the, to the question prompt and to the options, looking at the underlying word or the words that you've highlighted so that you don't waste time reading everything again because you've forgotten. Remember that the exam puts you on certain tension. That's the honest truth. It puts you on some level of tension. So you have to find a way to beat that tension. Now, finding a way to beat that tension means that you have to find a way to maximize time. Because one thing that makes students to be very, very anxious is the fact that you know, that it's a timed exam and then they have to find a way to answer that question. Right. So it's important that you understand your question first. Look at the options. Underline what is um, you feel is the most important thing in the option and your question, and then quickly go to the text. As I said, don't dwell too much in the multiple choice option. That's the A, B, and C. Okay, just skim through it. If you see one very good word that is there, you underline. You go to option B, you circle it, you go to option C, you can underline a circle, and then quickly go to your text. And then you read your text with focus on what you really have at the back of your head regarding the question, what was this question talking about, okay? And I'm going to show you different kind of question and how the reading part B, you know, usually ask that question. So number two, you have to read the text thoroughly. Remember that I said that unlike a, unlike a reading, unlike a reading part A, reading part A doesn't require you to read your text thoroughly, right? It's vision. Can you hear me? Hello, is it clear now? Hello, is it clear? Hello? Hello, is it clear? Hello, can you all hear me now? Hello? Okay. Hello, can you all hear me confirm my audio? Can you confirm my audio? Hello? Yeah, can you hear me? Okay, hold on, please. Hold on. It's clear now. Okay, it's clear now. All right, thank you. Can you see my screen? yes okay all right thank you all right so i was talking about um read um tip two so tip two requires you to read your questions your text thoroughly and when i mean thoroughly understand what the text is talking about so now now that you read the question you understand and paraphrase the question in your head and then you've highlighted what is important as i said we're going to do some practical sessions the next thing is to read through each of the texts you come across and at this point highlight the important information in the text itself okay so for example if the text is talking about issues about blood pressure monitor i'll just be using blood pressure monitor as an example All right whenever you see blood pressure monitor in the text you have to cone your attention to that part of the text so that you can get the answer all right so you have to read thoroughly understand oh, what is it talking about what is it talking about blood pressure monitor here? What is it talking about? you see another place about blood pressure monitor you read again you cone it down place your time and put your time towards that part okay so that so that at the time you're answering the questions it's going to be easier for you and then you don't waste time okay all right so you have to read your text thoroughly i'm going to do some practical sessions so we'll understand this better all right so reading your text is very very paramount to understanding your um reading part b now another thing you need to do is highlight what that you don't understand there's sometimes that you might be reading the text and then you might not understand some certain vocabulary all right or some vocabulary might be ambiguous for you okay so it's important that you highlight it okay by the time you highlight your 
by the time you highlight those um ambiguous words or those words that are hard to comprehend. Okay, someone mm -hmm. mic is on. You said so now. No, 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 no. Can you mute your mic, please? Someone's mic is on. All right, thank you. All right, so highlight the words that you don't understand and then build your vocabulary on it. Okay, so um so number four. Now, one thing about reading part B is that sometimes, even when you read the text, I'm sure some of us have found ourselves in this situation, you might not really, really, really get the answer. You might not really be sure of the answer, even after reading the text. It happens. Sometimes you'll be like, okay, ah, it's looking like A, it's looking like B. Ah, maybe it's looking like B, it's looking like C. You're not really sure. You're not really certain, right? Now, one of the things you can do is to, is to eliminate wrong answers. Okay, and I'm going to show you questions like that very soon now. All right, so sometimes you might look at um, A, B, and C, and you're still confused for your options. You can now start doing answering by elimination. All right, so you look at question A, option A, and then you see that option A doesn't really match anything in the text, or it matches something in the text, but it's not exactly. So sometimes you might see questions like this. Option A might talk, my, option A might say, option A might say, Blood pressure monitor should be available in all the words. Okay, all the words might be option A. In the text, they might say blood pressure monitor should be available in most of the words. Now, because if you saw blood pressure monitor is available in the words and you didn't pay cognizant to all and most, the text said most. The option A is saying all. You don't feel, oh, because you saw blood pressure monitor in the text and then you saw the words in the text. You just quickly go and pick the answer. You might be shooting yourself in the foot. So it's important that you understand those things. Sometimes you might see something like blood pressure monitor might be found, should be used in some part of the words. And then you're not seeing your option A saying blood pressure monitor should be used in all the words. You didn't take cognizance of some and then you felt that was the answer. You now go and pick the answer. So it's important that as you're reading, sometimes you have to eliminate. So for example, if I see that kind of stuff, and I'm like, oh yeah, this was in, I saw this in the text, but then the text is saying some. The option is saying all. So that cannot be the answer. You eliminate that one. You now go to question B. B is saying another thing. B, 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 maybe B is saying that um, all healthcare practitioner can be allowed to use the blood pressure monitor. But then the option, they said, in the text, they now said most healthcare workers can use it, uh, which include the doctors and the nurses. And then you feel that, oh, because you saw that they mentioned some healthcare workers that should use the blood pressure monitor, you now need to pick your answer. So sometimes you might read the text and might not get the answer. And then it's important for you to eliminate. And I'm going to explain how to eliminate properly by the time we do a practical session. So elimination is very important. So as you're reading through your text, as you're reading to your text, you're eliminating certain answers. I can tell you for free that there are some answers that, because I actually do some of this practice myself, there are some answers that I get for the reading part B that I got through via elimination. I might read the text and I might not fully grasp it. I might not comprehend it that much. But then with my elimination method, I will still get the answer. And I know that, okay, if A is not the answer, if B is not the answer, I know that definitely C will have to be the answer in as much as C may or may not make sense to me. But I know that I was confident enough to eliminate A. I was confident enough to eliminate B. And that's how I was able to get my answer. All right? So we'll look at questions like that. So tip five, of course, the idea is for us to find the answer. All right? So um, it's important that after you've underlined, you've highlighted, okay, certain things in your um in your reading it's important that you get the right answers and getting the right answers i said is a it's 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 everything that we've mentioned okay that at the end of the day what you want to do for your reading part b is for you to get the answers okay so you don't want to be in a situation where answers are not coming to you easily because you might get frustrated in the exam all right so i'll be projecting something now for us to show to explain one or two things all right, so still reading part B. Um, so I've mentioned a few things for the tips, and then we're going to look at this together. All right. So first of all, we know that for reading part B, one thing that is important that your background knowledge already, your background knowledge already helps you. 
Okay, your background knowledge is already helpful for you. All right, so you might be reading something about malaria because you already have a good knowledge about malaria. It might be help helpful for you to read the text quickly because you already understand what malaria is all about. All right, so your background knowledge is very important. Number two, as I highlighted here again, I said read the questions and the options very carefully. Please do that. If you cannot grasp them, please use your pencil or your bio and underline the most important words there so that you don't just keep on going back and forth aimlessly and wasting time, okay? So it's important that you understand what the question is talking about. And if you're having difficulty in understanding, use your pencil or bio to highlight those most important things. What is the major topic of this text? What is it talking about? Okay, is it a gist question? Is it a detailed kind of question? We're going to look at that together. What is he talking about? Sometimes you might just say questions. I'm sure you've seen questions in part B that will just say, the memo, the memo says, that's all. So that means that kind of question is looking for you to read the text and understand the summary of what the memo is talking about. Sometimes you might see questions that says, the memo says about healthcare workers. So they've coned it down now to healthcare workers. So they're looking for a particular kind of information regarding that. Okay, but then, you will not know that, okay, all you should be looking for in the text is anything that has to do with healthcare workers. Okay, you might not be concerned about patients. They might mention patients in the text. That's none of your business because you're looking for things that have to do with healthcare workers. They may mention the janitors. They may mention other things in the text. You're less concerned about that. Where you should cone your attention is where in the text did they mention healthcare workers? So you're going to read everything circumspectly, but then you're going to cone your attention on looking for where they mention about healthcare workers. Right, we're going to do some practice, and I'm very sure this will really, really make sense at the end of this class. And then I'm going to take questions as soon as I'm done. All right. So one thing I said, um, please, if the class and just rejoin with the same link. Yeah, thank you. All right. So one thing I mentioned is that understand the question. Now, sometimes some questions are looking for gist, some are looking for details. Now, let me give you an example here. Now. All right. So. So I'm looking for G, so I'm looking for details. Okay, now look at this. Look at this question here. Now look at this. Now look at this question here where my cursor is. It says, the manual informs us that the blood pressure monitor. The manual informs us that the blood pressure monitor. All right? So what this is looking for is looking for a specific detail. Right? Are you all with me? Can you all hear me? This question is looking for a specific detail. And what's that specific detail? The blood pressure monitor. So by the time you are reading your text, you are looking for um, things in the text that indicates blood pressure monitor. All right? And then you're not going to be concerned about thermometer. You're not going to be concerned about other kind of equipment. What you know that they are looking for a specific detail. And that specific detail is blood pressure monitor. So this is a specific detail kind of question. So we're not looking for gist here. We're not looking for the gist of the matter. Okay. So my, Hello, can you I, hear me? I'm very Help Hello. me on that. Hello, Dr. Evelyn H. Here. I think your mic oh, is sorry. on. Yeah, thank huh? you. All right. So this is looking for a specific detail. Specific detail. And then you must understand that there are certain questions that come this way. For us that have been practicing, or for those that are new, these are some of the ways questions can come. They say the manual informs us that blood pressure monitor. And they know that, oh, this is specific detail. So I'm looking for blood pressure monitor here. Now, some questions might come this way. Look at this other one. The question might come, the purpose of this email is to, it can be like that. So this kind of purpose of this email, they are not, they are not specific about anything. They're not giving you any specific detail. So they require you to read the whole text, right? And after reading the old text, understand what the text is talking about. And then reading the text, we're going to see how we can answer questions that has to do with specific detail and looking for gist. So this one is looking for gist. So that means if I'm to read the text in this question prompt, I'm going to try to read everything and understand what it is talking about. All right? So this is gist question. So the memo is talking about, I don't know what the memo is talking about. I have to read to understand what the memo is talking about. They didn't tell me the memo is talking about the uh, thermometer. No. Once they mention certain things like that, like blood pressure monitor, as we looked at 
as we mentioned at the one above, you know that, okay, that one is talking about specific details. So I'm looking for blood pressure monitor. So you might get questions like this, and then these questions like this are looking for the gist, the gist, the gist, okay? So this is a gist question, all right? So it's important that you understand what this kind of question, because they are very important for you to understand. Now, one thing that OET does a lot, in fact, one thing that I've really, one thing that really makes students not to score so high in part B is paraphrasing. Yes, they paraphrase what is in the option and what is in the text. So if you don't understand how paraphrasing work, you might end up missing the gist of the question. Yes. So for example, look at this. Now, one of the options here, options B, okay, just assume one of the options B is like this. One of the option B says, may not work correctly in close proximity to some other devices. Okay, that's B option. In the text, see what the text said, the actual text itself. The actual text says, care should be taken to avoid the use of monitor within seven meters of cell phones. Now, seven meters of cell phone is not as exactly as close proximity. Okay. However, it is a way of paraphrasing. Within seven meters means within close range, okay? Or within close proximity. So if you're not very, very smart enough to get that, you might say, ah, no, 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 no. They didn't mention within seven meters in the option. So that cannot be the answer. Meanwhile, the answer is staring at you like this. Just like this, like it's staring at you. But then because you are not able to understand paraphrasing. So paraphrasing plays a very big role. And that's what OET part B it's all about, to be honest. You see some static questions, you understand that, yes, this is a paraphrase question. Okay, so they paraphrase a lot. So close proximity in this regard now is in similitude to within seven meters, right? And we're going to be seeing questions like this, and then we're going to tackle them properly. So they paraphrase a lot in um, in the OET part B. Now, this is a, these are just, when I put it, um, kind of testing the microphone kind of question here. These are not the meat of the matter, but let's look at this. And I'm sure that some of us have watched the recorded video, so this might not be difficult. Now look at this question now. This question one, okay? This is not really, this is not the practice question we're doing for today. This is just a preamble, okay? Um, I just use this one for us to test, all right? And then we're going to do the major practice question together. We've never done that practice question as a group, all right? So now look at this now. This question said, the notice of giving information about the notice is giving information about what kind of question is this is this is this a gist question or a specific detail kind of question who can tell me this question we're seeing it's a gist it's, question it's a gist question right so this question is looking about talking about gist now if i look at it the notice is giving information about in my head i already know that it's a gist question most times in gist questions, you might not necessarily have to underline because you know that you have to read everything to summarize and get your answer. All right, so I now look at question option A, ways of checking that an NG tube has been placed correctly. So NG tube has been placed correctly might be underlined by the candidate. How the use of NG tube is authorized, okay? How is important, NG tubes and authorization, okay? You can underline how and authorization. All right, and then option C says, which staff should perform NG tube placement? Which staff is important? And then NG tube placement is important. So by the time I'm reading, I already know what I'm looking for because first of all, on the line was important. If I cannot, now some candidates are very good. They might not necessarily even have to underline, but then as I said, anxiety can make you, can be somewhere in the exam, honestly. But if you are very confident, Underline your those important um, part of your options and then come to your text and read. Now, let's read the text now. We'll just do one of this. Now, they said displacement of nasograstic tubes have been serious, have, can have serious complication if undetected and incorrectly positioned tubes leave patients vulnerable to the risk of regurgitation and respiratory aspiration. Now, we're not getting somewhere. Look at certain words that they now use. So, when you're reading part B, Sometimes there are words that they use to draw your attention. I must focus on them. Look at this word, crucial. It's an important word. Now they said it is crucial mm -hmm, 
to differentiate between gastric and respiratory placement on initial insertion to prevent potentially fatal pulmonary complication. Now look at this word now. They said insertion and key of an NG tube should therefore, you see this word, something like therefore, okay? Usually highlights where you're <laughs> Hello, someone's mm -hmm. Hello, kindly mute your mic, please. Okay. Kindly mute your mic, please. All right, thank you. All right, so there are certain words in OET, okay, that will, that will actually give you an idea where the answers should be coned. You see certain, certain words like should, therefore, must, okay? No certain words. Now look at the end and it said, NG tube should therefore... When you see therefore means they are drawing your attention to that particular sentence. All right. And it's important for you to understand what that sentence is talking about. So therefore, only that's another thing now. Only is another thing now they already mentioned it. So it's another important word to look at for. Okay. So only. Okay. So only here. Should therefore only be carried out by a registered nurse or a doctor who has undergone theoretical and practical training and is deemed competent or is supervised by someone competent? For me, I already know what my answer is. Should therefore, that means I should draw my attention to this part of the sentence, right? So should therefore only be carried out by a registered doctor or nurse who has undergone theoretical and practical training and is deemed competent or is supervised by someone competent. Should therefore. So now let me read to the very end, just for reading sake. All right. Assistant practitioners and other unregistered staff must never insert NG tube or involve initial confirmation of NG tube. So by the time I now look at this, I look at that should dear for that part of that sentence. I know they're already telling me that it's only doctors and nurses that should insert and confirm NG tube placements. So I go back to my options again. Ways of checking that an NG tube placement is placed correctly. They didn't tell me ways. They didn't tell me I should uh, look for the whoosh sound. They didn't tell me I should.